Welcome back. Now we'll move into the last part of this nitrogen series on soil nitrate tests. Uh, so we have uh, two soil nitrate tests here in Wisconsin, the pre-plant nitrate test and the pre-side dress nitrate test. They're used to adjust N recommendations. The pre-plant nitrate test, or PPNT, can be used for corn and sweet corn and wheat. And it's used to measure residual or carryover N. The PSNT, on the other hand, uh, is really for corn. Uh, it measures the uh, amount of plant available N that's been released from organic sources uh, throughout the springtime uh, to that point in the growing season. There are a lot of details on these uh, soil nitrate tests in, uh, in A2009. Really look hard at that information. I believe that's actually chapter six and not chapter five. And uh, let's get into some, some of the details on the PPNT, or pre-plant nitrate test. Again, measures residual or carryover N. It's going to work best on medium and fine textured soils. Uh, it works even better when the previous growing season or overwinter precipitation is uh, normal or below normal. It's especially good if the precip has been below normal. Uh, for example, 2012 growing season was a drought in many parts of the state. The PPNT was a good thing to use in spring 2013 to see how much N might have been carried over. It wasn't used by the crop, but then also didn't have a chance to be lost because there wasn't rainfall to leach or denitrify that N. Another place uh, to use it would be where uh, you have reason to believe that the N application to the prior crop was in excess of crop need. Now the PPNT is not recommended in several situations. If the you had above normal precip in the previous growing season or over winter, there's no point in using it. <clears throat> On sandy soils, it just doesn't work. Uh, it, when the previous uh, crop was nitrogen deficient, also there's not going to be a lot left over, so no point in testing. And uh, if you had first year alfalfa or, or other previous, or, or forage legume as the previous crop, you don't want to use this test. It's not the right one. And with the test, you're taking uh, soil samples to two feet in one foot increment. Uh, in, for corn and sweet corn, you're doing this in early spring. Uh, for wheat, you'd be doing it in, in late summer to uh, fall just prior to planting. Uh, you need to collect uh, at least 15 cores uh, randomly from 20 acres and composite them to make one sample. Uh, you could certainly sample with uh, greater frequency or, or uh, uh, more sample or uh, fewer acres per one sample if you choose. Now, um, how you use the, the PPNT, uh, what you do is uh, here's the for corn and sweet corn, our table. Uh, we look at our PPNT results in pounds of uh, nitrate N per acre. And if you have 0 to 50 as your test value, uh, there's no credit. Uh, if you have over 200 uh, for your PPNT, uh, there's no need to put on any additional N. Uh, <clears throat> and then uh, if you have 50 to 200 pounds per acre, uh, then what you do is you take your um, PPNT value, let's just say 200, subtract 50, that's a background amount, to get 150. And that would be your uh, N credit. Now, if you calculate something uh, that says apply less than 50 pounds, uh, we're suggesting you really should apply a minimum of 50 pounds, even when the PPNT is taken. Now, uh, for wheat, uh, the interpretation of the PPNT is built into our MRTN N rate guidelines, as we uh, discussed in the uh, previous video. And when we have our, our nitrogen credits for recent manure applications still need to be taken. So if there was a, a fall manure application or a earlier spring application, you're still going to need to take that end credit. Uh, PPNT doesn't do a particularly good job of picking that up very well. Now that moves us into the pre-side dress uh, soil nitrate test, or PSNT. This measures uh, nitrogen that be has become plant available uh, in the spring. Uh, and so it's essentially from springtime to the time that you take uh, the soil sample. Uh, ideally, you want to be sampling when the corn's about 6 to 12 inches tall. Uh, really, you need to allow enough time to take the sample, send it to a lab, get the results, and apply N to corn before your crop is too large. 
And we have to factor in that there can sometimes be weather uh, that precludes us from getting out into the field. Now, as we've gotten uh, in some areas some high clearance equipment, uh, we have a little more uh, window than what we have with a traditional side dress application. Now we collect these samples to a one foot depth and again 15 cores uh, composited uh, randomly from throughout 20 acres to make one sample. And again if you want a sample uh, with a greater intensity, say one sample per 10 acres, you can do that as well. Now here's our interpretation of uh, the PSNT. Uh, if you have a PSNT value, now here it's in parts per million of nitrate N. If it's over 21 then there's no need to apply further nitrogen. Uh, you could also see that our credits are broken down um, by uh, high and medium yield potential soils. So as we have smaller PSNT values, you'll see that N credit uh, becomes smaller. So now the PSNT can be influenced by uh, weather conditions. And we know that uh, when we have uh, air temperatures that are more than one degree Fahrenheit below normal in May and June, the PSNT credit can come back a little low. Uh, and, and we would underestimate the amount of N credits that we have. And that's uh, based on the, the assumption that uh, where the research was done, where the July and August uh, temperatures uh, bumped up and were more normal. Uh, so we just need to keep in mind that, that we can sometimes have some underestimation in cool temperatures. Now the PSNT can give uh, lower than actual end credits uh, with spring manure application or spring killed alfalfa. And again, it's um, mineralization tends to kick in, but it's a little bit later than uh, what might show up on the, the PSNT. Those are just some known uh, issues with it. Now for more details, again, read chapter 6, pages 46 to 50 for more detail. That's chapter 6 and A2809. Now, once you have these soil nitrate samples, you need to know how to sample or how to handle them. Uh, if you cannot deliver the samples to a lab within one day, you really need to either freeze or refrigerate them. Get them cool. Get them below 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, or air dry them to prevent changes in soil nitrates. And air drying could be something uh, relatively simple where you uh, lay the, the soil out onto a newspaper and in the garage on the floor and have a fan running up over it. Something to get it dry because if it stays moist and warm, you're going to nitrify. And that will change your results and be inaccurate. So if you'd like more information on nitrogen, uh, and in particular studying for this uh, CCA exam, uh, read uh, Extension Publication A2809 Nutrient Application Guidelines for Field, Vegetable, and Fruit Crops in Wisconsin. Chapter 6 uh, is especially important. Uh, there's also some information that we talked about with our legume credits that would be in Chapter 9 on uh, nutrient credits. And then um, there's also uh, the Nitrogen Management in Sandy Soils Bulletin A3634, which can be useful as well. And so remember, you need to think like Bucky. Always be thinking about your nitrogen cycle in order to improve your nitrogen management.